Megan, it's Shinari here. So guys, today I'm doing a story time. I haven't done one of these in a while, and today I'm talking about my pregnancy story. I never thought I would be doing one of these on YouTube, but I guess it's the first time for everything, so I'm gonna do it. All right, so if you are new to my channel, which there are a lot of you, hello. The way I do my story times are, they are long. I did them long because People always have a lot of questions, and I'm very thorough of a person. I've learned that through YouTube to try to get everything in in one story time. So, if you don't like long stories, don't watch me, because that's what I do. And it works, because at that point, you don't really have much to ask, so you just start making assumptions, and that's a-okay. So how am I gonna do this? I made some, like, quick little notes. Um, I guess, okay, I'm gonna do a backstory first. I'm gonna talk about us meeting, a little bit about him, um, just like stuff I was going through, how I found out, and what I'm up to now. So I would do it in that chronological order. So yeah, I'm very comfortable right now, guys. I got my little coffee. Mm, it's a big mug, too. And it is so good. And right now they're doing lawn work. So, guys, <laughs> first of all, I have not been hiding out. If you have been a watcher of mine for a while, you don't even have to be for a while, you know that I post sporadically I'm not consistent and a YouTube tip if you want to be good on here you need to be consistent and I am not people like to know when they're gonna be seeing you again that's just not for me once I have to start doing stuff on the schedule guys it's gonna feel like too much of a job probably go you know I gotta start doing it when what <laughs> you know so I kind of post in bunches like I'll post a whole bunch and then I'll just not go but I'm gonna work on that that's something that I told myself this year, like, I'm gonna work on that, like, not posting weirdly. All right, and one more thing before I start. If you're looking for, like, a sad, like, tearful story, this just isn't it, okay? <laughs> this is just the truth, and this is how I am, and if I come off a little bit nonchalant, as people love to comment on my channel, that's just the way I am. Sometimes I downplay things, but it's not on purpose. Sometimes I really just don't know what a big deal is to people obviously look at my channel like believe me if i really thought that i was going to be hurting people's feelings or this and that i'm not really that type of person so or that people would be so upset i don't like to really like ruffle feathers but that's just i'm just one of those people who do it on accident so yeah anyway let's talk about the beginning okay so this guy i'm only going to speak about him right now because he has had such a large significance in my life but this is the guy I was dating. I was dating this guy who broke my heart completely for the first time in my entire life. In 2013, I met this guy. And um, 2014, January, we broke up. He broke up with me, and it crushed me. It was the first time I was in such denial that I was heartbroken. <sighs> Oof, I can't even like talk about it because it was so bad. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. I mean, I was just lashing out at people. My work, it was affecting my work. Like, sometimes I would have to stop doing hair so I can go cry. I lost so much weight. I was actually cute, though. But I was tall, so, like, my weight was really showing up on me. And whenever I get kind of skinny, my collarbone really, like, protrudes. But, um, yeah, I would work out for, like, five hours. And I would drink one smoothie that day. And sometimes I would just be throwing up. Like, I, would, I just got so skinny. I lost, like, 30 pounds or whatever in, like, a month or like a month and a half I was just I was a mess I was really 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 sad and I was posting a lot on social media because I was so happy with my body I was hoping that maybe he'll come back he just wanted booty calls y'all this guy and one thing I learned from this experience is that if somebody doesn't want you and they are really over you they are really over you and I've done that to a guy where he was really he really wanted to be with me but I was not interested in him anymore I was done and I had to learn that in this relationship. When somebody doesn't want you, they don't want your ass. And it doesn't matter what you do. And if you do do a lot of things to like make yourself appear better and then they want you, you probably don't want that person because they just, you know, they didn't, you know what I mean? You probably don't really want that type of person in your life. Okay? This has something to do with the story. Um, I was just heartbroken. I would literally be walking around the grocery store just wandering like mindlessly. I would be staring at one thing for like an hour. I wouldn't even notice it. People would be bumping into me. I would just be just walking around just shopping. And one thing I do when I'm really depressed is I shop and I buy like just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, anyway yeah like i said and then it's just the way that he went about it you know there are so many ways you can go about relationship breakups 
Um, but I'm a very simple person. I'm very mindful of the other person, but, I, but the way that he went about it, it was horrible. So I won't even talk about that, but um, one day, I was really trying to get out of the house. These girls, I had met, I was doing their hair. These girls are actually some fake ass bitches. But I was doing their hair, and they were like, man, you seem so cool, let's hang out. So like a month later, she was like, hey, you know, I'm having a house party, you wanna come by? I said, sure. <laughs> she lived in East Sixth in Austin, you know, like East Austin. Anyway, I went there and I met up with them and I just had so much fun. I put on this dress. I had just worked out. Like, I had even um, canceled like a hair appointment I wanted to go. Because I had told myself, um, I was like, guys, it's a new day. Like, my hair appointments had actually ruined my last relationship because I couldn't spend enough time with him because I just had to work so much and I only worked on the weekends and that was the only time he was off. So that kind of like ruined my last relationship. So I was like, you know what? This is going to be a new start for me. I... I'm literally trying to survive you know we're in different places me and the guy and but I need to do the hair I can't turn down any hair jobs I need to work you know and I have been working like little jobs here and there but anyway I was trying to make ends meet and it was just hurting our relationship also so yeah I went to the party and that's when I met him I he was the friend of the guy who stole my diary and the story time that I told in the story time I told you guys how I went to a house party and I met that guy that's the friend who I was seeing who I was not all that interested in, but I ended up being with him. So yeah, we met at a house party and he was just, he was dressed, you know, I kind of thought he was a bit square, you know, he was wearing glasses, he was wearing like, kind of like a suit, like a dress shirt and pants. And it was like a house party and I was wearing like this coochie cutter dress with my tits out and I was like, why is he here? Like, <laughs> anyway, he ended up getting my number. I was trying not to, I was like not really all that interested. But um, the other guy's phone was dead, so I g gave him my number so that the other guy could have it. But anyway, I think the guy wrote down my number like on a pen and paper or something, so yeah. That night ended, it was so much fun. I got the most drunk that I ever have in my life, and I'm not one of those people that needs to drink to have fun, but that night I drank so much. It was free drink. <laughs> you know, I just partied, and I was so sweaty, and I just looked so terrible, guys. I was just a hot sweaty ass mess but I was a hot happy sweaty ass mess I get back home and <laughs> guys that was the worst day of my life the next day literally was the worst day of my life I should have stayed home horrible 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 stuff happened and I'll talk about that later and then I didn't talk to him for like a week he calls me back and I finally just text him and I'm like, hey, what's up, you know? <laughs> so we start hanging out and guys, we hang out every single day and he just made me so, so happy. I was just so depressed, like, I just was, I was sad. I was really sad and I was in denial and, we, and I had nobody to talk to, I had no friends. My family was not really helping me, like, they don't, they're not good with emotional situations, guys, and that's how it's always been. So emotionally, I have been so deprived, like, always, and I still am, like, and, um, he wasn't emotionally, like, fulfilling me, but for once, I can relax in a relationship. Like, to give you guys kind of like a backstory, like, in every relationship, I end up having to be, like, I'm always teaching the guy, like, the guy who broke up with me and broke my heart, I pretty much taught him everything like he didn't know like simple things I'm not even talking about okay open the door for a girl no guys it was simple stuff like hey you know you're not you shouldn't do that you know that's hurtful you, should, you shouldn't say things like that that's hurtful and um, you know it was just things like that a lot of things were so unsaid with him so yeah a lot of things were just unsaid with him and that was like one of the issues he had a very bad communication but I wanted to be with him so blah blah so that's what was going on so when a new guy came around every day we spent together and it wasn't even like we were just too much you know like over like lapping each other it wasn't like that we weren't getting tired of each other if we had time to hang out we did and we were just making time and we were being adults about the situation and let me remind you guys, he's much older than me. He's about 15 years, and I don't even date guys like that, which is initially why I wasn't really interested in him. It wasn't because he was a square. He looked like he was, like, 27. But um, he was 37, actually. And, um, you know, 
I've never been really attracted to older men, but my friends are like, girl, you need to try out an older guy. Like, try dating older. I, I typically would date guys who are like about 27, 28, and even they were just really immature and stuff. So age has nothing really to do with it. You know, you're going to do whatever the hell you want to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And then we would go hiking and we would talk for like four hours and then he would want to hang out more but I would be like, no, you know, let's hang out a little bit more tomorrow. I just didn't want him to get tired of me. You know, I didn't want to just spend too much time. He didn't have a car. So, uh, and I found that out pretty early. Like one day he was like, hey, you should come by, you know, I'll give you gas money. Or it was like, he kept with saying, you know, I'll call Uber. I thought he was calling an Uber just because he was just being nice. And I was like, no, I have a car. You know, I would much rather just come over there. You know, Uber just, you know, that's just kind of like a waste of money. I'll, I'll come see you. So it was like that. You know, I would come all the way over there. And then he would just be trying to be kind of like sexual. And I didn't like that. So I, had, I let him know like immediately, like, look, I am not trying to do that. If that's what you want, that's totally fine. But please, like, try to find somebody else. Like, I'm not really, really interested in that because I just, like, my ex literally just tried to do the whole friends with benefits with me thing. And I'm just not trying to do that right now. And, you know, the typical, I understand. They don't understand. They really don't. So, anyway, a couple more times, you know, we hung out and everything, it was just perfect, it was great. We were really like getting to know each other. And also, one thing I like was his consistency. I always talk about like consistency because I have been lacking that in relationships. Every day I remember, because he lived so close to the domain, him and his friend, and they would always meet it for like a lunch meetup at McCormick and Schmick's uh, for like happy hour. So I would always meet up with him and we would just hang out or whatever at like four o'clock every day. Him and his friend would just be like brainstorming for like, you know, ideas because, you know, he was working on a business and stuff. And I would just be sitting there just hanging out just with him and stuff. And it was just so nice. I would always give me like a little burger appetizer. And it was just something that we would do every day, four o'clock on the dot. I would just show up there, you know. It was just a nice time. All right, so this was like a month into everything. Um, it was time for me to move. I had signed a 13 month lease in my apartment that I had been living at by myself and it was time to move. Like everything else, I underestimated the move and how much shit I had. So he ended up helping me pack. He got a U-Haul. He even hired the people that cleaned his house to, you know, do a make ready for my house and everything. And um, that was great. Like that was amazing i really 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 needed help moving and i didn't know how over the like over my head that i was in moving literally the day i was supposed to be done i was still there like getting shit up and putting it in my car and driving to the you you know the thing so yeah he just let me chill he paid for the u-haul for like a couple days so that i could just hang out and be okay and i just thought that was just so amazing that was really like a true show of his character now, he had been pushing relationship, relationship, you know, we need to be in a relationship, I really want to be with you, and I was like, you know what, that's fine, like, I think I'm okay enough to do that, but there was one thing, he really wasn't, he was one of those guys that was just kind of trying to tell me what he thought I wanted to hear, now, because I've been heartbroken, I was really not trying to hear that, I wasn't really trying to hear a relationship, but I was like, you know what, I can't let a good man pass me up, so I thought, um, what happened? One night I was just over at his house, we were just hanging out, and he was taking a shower. And of course, this was, he was the type of guy, like he had been a bachelor, so he just had his phone out, and he didn't have a lock code on his phone. Um, I, his phone lit up, and because like I mentioned earlier guys, he couldn't see very well, the words are very, very large, so I went to his phone, I just saw it light up in the dark, and there wasn't big letters, like a girl was texting him, being very flirtatious and I went and had looked at the text messages and he had like a long row and one I was really really one girl it was two different girls one I was just really not okay with I let his bitch ass know <laughs> okay I gotta cut that part out I let him know and I was like this is not okay and this and then another night it actually before I even moved out of my house one night he had came over his ass out because I had saw his text message and I was like, get out. Look, I you are trying to hurt me and I'm not going to allow you to do that to me. I see what you're doing. You're trying to, like, you know, you just want sex. And I told you 
that's fine. But with somebody else and be truthful. He was still trying to play that whole game where he acts like he wants a relationship and he doesn't. You don't want a relationship. Look, I'm a big girl. I can handle it. You don't have to do all this. Stop the charades. Stop the charades. And I kept telling him this. So I kicked him out. You know, I went out with my day. And, um... You know, he came by, he apologized. It was just like, a, you know, it was just, that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I knew that from then on that, like, he honestly could not be trusted. After that, you know, I don't know what happened, but some, a, a plethora of things happened. I don't know if he felt guilty, but um, he was pretty great. He had a couple attitude issues, though. Because I remember one specific time, um, I went to look at the storage, and I couldn't get it because what happened, like... Oh yeah, my brother, I got a storage for him really quickly. We forgot to switch our names over and I couldn't get another storage there. I had all my shit there and I needed to get a storage before like a certain time or whatever. So he put the storage in his name. They told us that we had to wait 24 hours and then we could just go switch it back over. So I said, okay, cool. He was really reluctant to do it for whatever reason. We went, we did it. He had such an attitude about it. He just got so nasty so quickly. And I just didn't have anybody to do it for me. Anyway, um, the next day we went to go switch over our names, me and him, we weren't talking at all. And then he texted me later and was like, you know, you looked so good, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, a couple of days later, we started talking back again and things had changed. Um, I don't know if he was deleting text messages before I would come over or what, but I came over and things were just changing. He was acting totally different. He had a much better attitude. He was being a bit more submissive to my needs and stuff. Um, and things were just going great, guys. So, like, it was literally, like, about three good months of just smooth selling. So, after him, you know, doing well for three months, I was like, okay, we can start talking about dating again. Um, because I was, he was helping me, he didn't even know it, slowly get over my ex. Like, literally, he would call me, and my ex would be like, hey, you want to hang out tonight? And I would be like, no, I think, no, I, I can't. Because... What the other guy was offering me was so much more better than what my ex was offering me. You know, the guy was taking me out, doing things. My ex, you know, he just wanted me to sleep over and stuff. And I was like, no, you know, he would take me out to the movies sometimes. And we would go out to, like, dinner. You know, he would try to make time for me, my ex, because we were trying a friendship thing. But he was not doing the friendship thing. He was doing the friends with benefits thing. And when I realized that, and this is a, this is like... A trend this is just a pattern that I have whenever I feel like I'm be like whenever I'm getting hurt by someone you know I typically just end it if the guy comes back the person comes back into my life and they're hurting me even more and they're the ones who want to be back in my life I give them the option look you don't have to be here please you know if you don't have any good intentions go but they typically just come back in your life because they have nothing better to do with their own lives so I have this pattern of using people I would just use the guy I mean I was asking my ex for like four hundred dollars five hundred dollars here and there two hundred dollars one time I paid him back like a hundred and like sixty bucks but after that I was just using him all the time because for me sex like friends with benefits that sex is not a benefit for me I'm a woman not to be rude but like you know I know guys are the same too almost but like you know women we can go to the grocery store and honestly get sex like sex is just being thrown at us so Sex is just not a benefit. I'm sorry. So whatever whatever you guys want to say, I don't give a damn. It's just not for me. It's just not. So it was like him trying to do the whole sex with friends with benefits thing. And I'm being hurt in the process because one piece of advice I give people, if you are heartbroken, do not do friends with benefits. Because no matter how good and bombed the pussy is, yes, he will still keep coming back. But not for you. For the pussy. Because he wants it. So that was it, and I was like, okay, yeah, the sex is okay, but I'm still emotionally attached to you, so I need things also. So, you know, I needed a new battery, you know, it was just, it was just stuff like that. Like, I was like, you know what, this is not even fun, and it got to the point where I just got done with even, like, using him, so I just ended that friendship. Uh, friendship with him you know he he would never he he just was not there for me he was not even a, he wasn't a good friend he's the one who told me that he wanted to be friends afterwards and I told him I don't do friends with benefits he was like no we're gonna be friends bullshit I'll show you what a friend is then so that was my whole thing you know look at it however you want to but yeah so anyway the guy who I met at the party was still consistent so like I was saying guys we started kind of having like 
actual relationship, me and the other guy. So I just stopped talking to him. And then after that, not too long after we started having like kind of like a relationship, he just started acting crazy again, just being weird. And we would just be getting into these weird fights. And I was kind of like, you know, kind of like backing off. And when I would back off, you know, he was one of those people who would relentlessly call you. He would call me like 30 times. And you're the one who did the bullshit. So, of course, this is why you're calling me like this. Just be like, okay, what is it? You know? And it was kind of like, okay, fine. You know, let's be friends again. Let's do this. Let's do that. Whatever. You know? And I would never do that. Like, I wouldn't just relentlessly call somebody because I'm upset. But I guess if I'm the one who's doing the wrong, then yes, I would relentlessly call, I guess. You know? So, anyway. Guys, it was just that back and forth. One day, I was like, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving to Houston. And, um... He acted so heartbroken, so heartbroken, like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe you're leaving me. I can't believe you're leaving. Like, why? Can you not find a job here? I told him there was just better opportunity in Houston. I was like, and he was like, what are you talking about? I've been trying to give you the resources, blah, 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 so you can stay. He was just acting like he was just so heartbroken, faking, guys. He was faking it. So I was like, you know, I'll be back. I'm going to think about it. Um, I had left for a little bit, and because he seemed so heartbroken, I was like, you know what? I like that. I'm gonna update this man every time I come back. I come back into town, so I keep looking at the viewfinder to make sure I'm in focus because of this camera sometimes doesn't. Y'all, I call him and I'm like, hey, I'm in town. What's up? You know, you wanna hang out? He'd be like, I mean, uh, I'm busy. I'm busy. Next time I'll catch you. And I was like, nigga, I haven't seen you in so long, and now you're busy. And he did that three or four times, literally. He kept saying, I'm busy, you know? So I said, okay, I get I get him. I stopped talking to him. And then um, I was like, you know what? This is just, not working out for me. I'm just gonna move back to Austin. I moved back to Austin. I got a roommate, you know, a place, everything. It was great, you know, I was finally had a little bit of consistency in my life. And this guy who, he was just a consistent in my life. And I liked that because he was grounded. He was okay. Um, you know, he was just okay. And, um, I have to mention this, guys. He used to be married. He was married to this woman, to this lawyer or whatever, like, a long, like, maybe like, f um, four, five, it was, about, no, it was six years ago, yeah. He was married to about five or six years ago. And one habit that he had because he had been living a bachelor lifestyle, I guess he had just kind of got lazy, but he would leave me at his house, at his apartment, all day. Because he was an engineer over at IBM when I first met him. I didn't know what IBM was. I thought it was a bank, y'all. I thought he was, I was like, damn, banks need engineers on the spot like that? Like, I was like, they need tellers or whatever. But yeah, so one thing that he would do that was so weird was that he would leave me at his house all day, like... I would come over and spend the night and then the next morning sometimes I would wake up and he was just gone and I'm like what the hell like where did you go he'll be like oh I'm at work I have to go like this nigga didn't even tell me so you know he had cable uh my roommates did not have cable <laughs> well I was at, so I would just be over there for like three or four days or whatever and um one day I was like you know what I'm gonna go through this closet I go through this closet and I see uh cards and stuff to a woman and I was like y'all these men why are they doing that okay so anyway they were just saying like they were like it was like a love card and he just signed it it was like you know I love you you know it was just already pre-written and then he would just like sign his name like love you blah blah and I was just like this nigga here like mm -mm. And then he had like baby's blankets and he had like a picture and it was like in a box. I was like, when he came home, you already know I said so. I said, what the fuck is this? What is this? He was like, you know, he didn't really want to talk about it. I said, okay, I'm leaving. I, I was done. And then after that, he explained to me and he showed me papers and stuff showing that he was divorced. And he just explained this whole spiel about being married, um, you know, years prior. And then she went to her home country. She came back and she was pregnant. Um, but he thinks that she was probably pregnant when she went there. But she ended up having a son. He had pictures of him with the son. So, you know, it's probably his. And I was just like, what the hell? Like, what 
is all of this? Like, why? Why lie? Why? This happened like early on in the relationship. I just totally forgot that because now that I'm talking about him, like I'm just remembering things. But it was just a bunch of bull and stuff. And he told me that he didn't have a son. He was like, you know, that's not my son in the first place. One day he had took me out to go get my nails done, and he he the lady said, "Do you have any kids?" She asked him. He said, "Yeah, I have a son." So I was like, bitch, you said you didn't have a son, like, not too long ago. So, guys, just a bunch of crap, just kind of, like, all over the place and stuff. And that was happening, like, more in the beginning. So the way it goes is, in the beginning, he was faking it. In the middle, we had just kind of, like, eh. Then towards the end, he was doing what he needed to do. So, fast forward to recently, like I said, I was living with my roommate, and... Everything was okay with her, you know, I wasn't really talking to him because when things are good, I, you know, I just don't really talk to him, but in December, things started getting bad with my roommate, and then in January, they just started turning horrible. Um, I went off to do, like, a study, and then I was in January, I was in January, so I was in Dallas a lot, I was barely ever home. When I came back, she started acting so weird. I had paid her rent and everything, you know, and I was not even there at all for like a month. But, um, she was just acting weird. So, he was, had been contacting me, I had been kind of ignoring him like I did in the beginning. And finally, I just started talking to him again. And everything was just so great. Like, every time I would go home, I was like, just, I would start breaking out sometimes because I just hated her energy. She was so horrible. So January, it was bad. She apologized and everything. February came back around. She was just acting terrible. March is when it became completely unbearable. And I even vlogged, you know, talking about my situations and what's going on and stuff and how she was acting. And I'll be telling you guys, I would be so excited because I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm going over to what's his name's house. He just made me so happy. And it was... It was just different. Everything was different. You know how you can just feel it? And we had finally, like, really started talking about becoming serious. At this point, he had turned 39. So, you know, 2014, 38. Last year, 39. He'll be 40 this year. And he was just getting more serious. Like, he was actually talking about, you know, he wants to be married. When I was first talking to him, he was, like, two years ago, it was like, nah, not really. You know, it's a possibility, but no. But this time, he was like, yes, I want to be married again. I want to have kids. And when I told him, you know, I want to be married, too, later on down the line, he was like, really? Wow. You know, and he so he started acting differently. He started treating me differently, treating me better. Everything was happening, like, in, like, you know, March, April. February, like those months, mainly January, February, March, he was acting differently because we had just actually talked about what we wanted. It was just a very casual conversation. So yeah, he was just another, you know, he, he just made me feel so good. Like, um, I would try anything to get out of the house because she was just making me so like irritable. Um, I would go to the movies at night so that I could come home really late and she wouldn't ask me any questions. I'd go upstairs, take a shower. It was that type of thing. And I was just escaping to his house and I was spending more time with him than I ever had in, um, you know, like a year. And um, I, in one of my vlogs, I had mentioned that I had been celibate. But um, I wasn't celibate on purpose. It was literally like an involuntary celibacy. And I even wrote about it in my blog. Because I had been meeting anybody and everybody was just so terrible at the time and I was just having such a bad time, I was not trying to physically give my body to anybody. And it's not even a spiritual thing or anything like that. I do understand that people do take your energy whenever you, you know, you enter it with them. But it wasn't even that. It was literally, I just felt like until I feel comfortable, I'm just not going to be intimate with anybody, you know? Me and him, we had been getting comfortable mentally and everything I could hang out with him and one day we just ended up like having sex <laughs> and yeah um it was like after my birthday and I ended up getting pregnant and stuff so I didn't know I was pregnant I had missed my period and I didn't like know see my period is kind of weird like it's pretty irregular so I mean it's not the most irregular but like there have been times where like, I would literally, like, not have my period for three weeks. 
Well, no, for two weeks. And then I would get it for, you know, a few days. And then I would have a no at all. And then a week later, I would get it. So they would be kind of like almost back to back because I had went like six weeks without it. So, and I'm the type of person like, I could have, I could have like no sex for six months, but my, since my period can sometimes be irregular, I still think I'm pregnant, even though I haven't had sex in six months. Like, that's how it was. So at this point, me and him hadn't had sex in about a year and like two months. I hadn't, oops, I'm out of focus. I hadn't had sex with anybody in about uh, 10 months or anything because of my previous relationships. They were just not good. And I was just like, I need to focus and stuff. And on top of that, guys, I, when sometimes when I'm having so much fun, if I'm not in a relationship, it's very easy for me to not be intimate with anybody. I can easily do it. Like, I don't need to have sex. Uh, it's not like that. And I'm not thinking about sex if we're not together. It's just easy if I'm by myself. So I know I was really, really busy. Okay, I have to go pee. Anyway, guys, so yeah, um, I went to go do a study. I do like clinical studies and stuff. And I had like this weird feeling I was pregnant. But anyway, I was like, nah, I'm not. No way. <sighs> I went, got a pregnancy, um, I had to do a pregnancy test because they test for everything when you go there. I mean, they test for even like hereditary crap. Um, anything down to a T and he called me and after you guys saw the phone call of him telling me that I was pregnant guys I thought I had an STD I thought I had something crazy I don't even know why like and the crazy thing is that like with the dad like I kept like pushing him about like using a condom using a condom so sometimes he would use it there was like one time where like I mean we just had a couple times where I mean, but it's just that we weren't even having that much sex, which is why it was so crazy to me. But of course, it doesn't take that much sex, guys. Like, let's be realistic here. And for people who keep saying, like, oh, you know, you need to close your legs, like, bitch, my legs were closed. We were in that one position where, you know, where, you know, you got your legs closed. He's kind of like hitting it like that. I'm kidding. But yeah, no, like, you know, <laughs> who knows what position it was. <laughs> but no, that's probably the one that did it. Because, you know, that one goes pretty damn deep. Like, <laughs> Anyway, the point is this, guys. You have to practice safe sex every single time. We literally had sex maybe like like once or twice, honestly. Like, I'm, and I'm not even downplaying that. Y'all know, I would tell you. Like, we was, we was getting it. No, it wasn't even like that. It was literally like twice. And um, it wasn't like often. It was just, you know, spur of the moment. He was just a great person at the time. And yeah, so... Um, Currently, uh, I made a decision about my child when I found out I was pregnant. The crazy thing is that even though he was somebody who I was thinking about getting serious with and I could see myself with for a long time and I was, you know, I was honestly becoming crazy about him, you know, it's getting to that point where it always does. In the moment that I knew I was pregnant, there was not a doubt in my mind about my decision. I knew exactly what I was going to do. Something about that just let me know something wasn't right. And I kept feeling my stomach and I was like, something's not right. Like, when I was touching my stomach in the video, it wasn't because I was like, oh, my baby. It was nothing like that, guys. It was like, I can't believe I'm pregnant. I can't believe it's him. It just wasn't right for me. And I don't care what any naysayers say. And I may even dis disable the comments on this video because this is just me and this is what I, this is my story. But I didn't feel right. And I had never, and I'm a very indecisive person, guys. I can't even decide what food I want. I don't even know what city I want to live in. I don't even know what I want to do. You know what I mean? I look like big decisions like that. But with this child, my instincts kicked in immediately. And I knew exactly what I was going to do. So, guys, technically, yes, I am still pregnant. Um, and today is Thursday what the 27th or something like that 28th and i will explain all of that in the next video you know when i talk about my decision how i came up with it and everything guys so yeah that was my pregnancy story um and in the video he said i was six weeks i was actually only four weeks because i had an ultrasound that monday and that ended up being four to five weeks so at that point i was only four and a half weeks and she confirmed it and everything so yeah all right, guys, I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Those of you that stuck up for me and defended me in the comments, you guys, 
like you have not been looked over ignored not a damn thing no 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 um and I just able to comment on the other videos simply because of ignorance like ignorance spreads like wildfire and I kept telling people that I, you can watch my journey here so guys if you want I can totally post vlogs showing my decision on this channel I just didn't want to overboard this channel with vlogs because sometimes people don't like that and I do think about people you know what I mean but at the same time this channel is about me and I just wanted to show that as women we are more than makeup hair babies monochrome Louboutin bags you know all that stuff we are way more than that way more and whatever decision I make, it is literally me and my body. So whatever your belief is, it's what I wanted to do. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later until the next video, which should be up tomorrow. So yeah, bye guys.